What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a very, very cool guest on our uh, VGC 2020 Best of 3 Battles. In fact, I'm a guest on his channel. He has more subscribers than me. We're going to be facing James Beck. Now, if you don't know who James Beck is, he's a YouTuber. He has around 18,000 subscribers, I think, uh, and he does VGC content. I've looked up to this guy for a long time, ever since I started uh, playing VGC, at least on YouTube. I'm pretty sure I, I watched him before I even started. It might be a little bit wrong in there, but I know I've watched him for a good number of years, so big fan of his content. His link will be in the description, and yeah, I'm just excited to actually get to play him. Don't expect much from me. <laughs> I'm going to be using this um, Thievel and DD team that I've been rocking for the past couple of weeks, or the past couple of days. Um, and yeah, no, I'm just excited. So if you guys are excited too, leave a like, subscribe, let's try to shoot for 150 today, and turn on notifications so you don't miss anything. Also, this is, I think, my first Wi-Fi battle with my face cam on. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. He's an extremely skilled player, so... Uh, I'm a little bit concerned as to how I'm going to hold up. As we see, they have the Porygon Z, which is something that we know is a threat for this team. Um, I'm also pretty scared to Snarl versus him because I'll just give a justified boost to that Terrakion. Let me think here. Um, I think I feel pretty safe leading off with... I like Indeedee Feeble because if the Terrakion comes in, Expanding Force should just deal with that. I think I'm fine with that lead. Um, in the back, I'm going to bring the Rotom because it deals with a couple of things. That uh, Terrakion and Corviknight mainly. And I think my last Pokemon, it's kind of a toss-up here. I kind of want to bring my own Terrakion because it outspeeds the um, it outspeeds the Porygon Z. However, Incineroar doesn't look awful either. Uh, and Amoongus could be a great asset for the team. I'm going to go ahead and bring the uh, Lumberry Terrakion though. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm excited. I'm really excited. Also, ignore the little face cam error here. If you see towards the left of me, uh, your left, it's my right, you'll you'll notice that there's a little bit of a clipping, I guess, in the camera, but we just have to deal with that for today because the lighting is weird in my room in the evening. As they end up leading off with Porygon Z and Clefairy, which is actually really good for me, I can get a Snarl off. And the Snarl is going to be super helpful. Alright. Now an Icy Wind would be kind of scary here if the Clefairy is going to go for it. But I think uh, they're more than likely just going to want to go for a... Um, what's that? Uh, they're mo more than likely just going to go for a Follow Me. So I'll get my Snarl off. Not too concerned about the Terrakion coming in here. Uh, however, if it does, I'm almost tempted to. I'm almost tempted to max guard here, because it would allow me to deal with um, their Terrakion even better, and I get to keep the Indeedy, which is nice for the end game. So I think here. Um, let me think. I might just max guard. Oh, I can't max guard. I'll max Mindstorm into that Porygon Z then. Or I guess it would have made more sense to Max Strike. I kind of ran out of time there. Max Strike would have um, evened out the speed tiers there. But it makes it easier for this Indeedee to survive, so I'll get some good damage off. I also might have messed up there and used the wrong, um, the wrong Max Psychic, but I think it's about the same. As they do Dynamax the Porygon Z, they'll get the speed advantage here, but um, I should be fine. Because I'm getting the Snarl off. Basically, the point of Dynamaxing there, I should have Max Strike it, by the way. Max Strike would have helped me keep up my speed, but because um, they're definitely going to Max Strike. The whole point of going for the Max there was exclusively to make sure Indeedee survives, because nothing wants to take that move, at least at neutral. There we go, get my Snarl off. They're likely expecting the Fake Tears there. There's the Max Strike, likely into the Indeedee. And we just get KO'd. I think that might have been a crit. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate. A little bit unfortunate, not gonna lie. <laughs> not exactly a fan of what just happened. But, um, how do I adjust here?
Hmm. I could attempt a snarl into rock slide, I guess. Or I could um let me think. Cause they're gonna they're gonna follow me, right? Hmm. I'll do this. In the off chance they don't follow me. I could go for a... Well, no. Because if they follow me, then my beat-up doesn't do anything. I'll go for this. I'll snarl into both of them. Do I want to keep Terrakion? Do I really want to keep Terrakion? I don't know. I'll go for this taunt into the Clefairy, I think. I just feel like they're definitely going to want to go for that move. They're gonna, definitely going to want to follow me. But at the very least, this makes it easier to deal with. Yeah, there's the follow me. They're a bit concerned of beat up. If they even know I have beat up. But Terrakion, I think, should be able to take a hit. As long as this isn't like Max Mindstorm. If they have it. Because if they have Max Mindstorm, I'm screwed. There's the taunt. As they go for the max strike, that's fine. Now what's great is I should definitely tank this. Yes, okay, we took that like a champ, actually. And their Dynamax going to end this turn, and they can't follow me. So what I really want to do, actually, here is go for a beat up into my, um, into my Terrakion. Yeah, I'll go for a beat up into my Terrakion, and I'll go for a Rock Slide. Or I could just get rid of Porygon Z. I could just get rid of Porygon Z or whatever wants to come in for the for the Clefairy here. So let me see what they have in the back. Um, it doesn't look like they have anything that wants to take the hit. But I definitely think that Rock Slide just makes more sense. Just to cover whatever might come in for Clefairy. There's the Max Strike. They're finally faster. Oh. That's, that's a little bit unfortunate. I thought I'd be able to take the hit, judging by the previous rolls. I do get some damage off, at least, and the Porygon Z avoids. So I'm kind of unlucky in this first game. I'm kind of getting really unlucky. We at least flinched the Clefairy. <laughs> uh, so I suppose my best play here would just be the Nasty Plot up. Uh, Clefairy definitely went for, like, Icy Wind or Moonblast, so we can get some uh, some information here. Is it possible to win this game? I might need to, I might need to forfeit, actually. I have to take a look at what they have. One more time. Nothing actually deals with Nasty Plot very well, so I'm going to Nasty Plot up. And attempt to close combat into this Porygon Z. There's the Porygon switching out. Maybe a Terrakion comes in? Incineroar. That's fine, actually. There's the Intimidate. I don't mind it too much. As long as they don't Icy Wind here. But I'm assuming that's probably their last move. As they end up switching out into Terrakion, I think? Rotom, okay. So, um... Psychic Terrain's still up. Rotom's the only thing that can get faked out. But I am running Protect. I'm assuming they're just going to want to go for it. I'll go for my Protect with both of my Mons. Scout out, see what moves they have. Because I don't see a point in... Um, I don't see a point in risking losing Terrakion if I have like the potential to crit and one-shot this Rotom, I guess. There's the Fake Out. Let's see if they Nasty Plot or something. There's the Thunderbolt. All right. Now, I don't have much investment um, bulk-wise. I have 4 HP in this Terrakion, so I don't know how well I take that. So what I'll do here, actually, I'll just go for a Thunderbolt into that Rotom and Rock Slide, and the off chance I actually take the hit. Because Rock Slide will definitely KO the Incineroar from here, and I think we have a chance of knocking out that Rotom. There's the Clefairy. Let's see if they protect. They do not. Okay. So I'm going to get my Thunderbolt off. They get their Citrus Berry Recovery, and I think if they knock out my Incineroar here, I'm going to have to... Or not my Incineroar, my Terrakion, I'm definitely going to have to forfeit the match. 
is to go for the Thunderbolt, not risking any misses. I take the hit. Get my Rock Slide off. And I'm actually pretty incentivized to go for a Hydro Pump into this Clefairy and attempt to knock it out as I protect my Rotom. Or as I protect my Terrakion. As they go for Protect, they're likely going to Icy Wind here. So as long as I land this hit, I should be fine. As they Protect. Okay. Okay. I see. Now, I'm pretty sure we're faster than that opposing Rotom, so another Thunderbolt should do it. I'll go ahead and I'll... Um, Actually, no, that isn't my play at all. They were they were definitely trying to draw that that uh, Protect there. So I'll go for a double Protect, I suppose. And I'll go for this Hydro Pump into the Clefairy and Protect again. As I don't get it, likely going to lose my... Uh, likely going to lose my, my boy here. All right. And we remove the Clefairy, which is nice. Let's see if they whiff this. Or they, they just have to Thunderbolt. There's no point in risking it. Now the question is, um, are they running Hyper Beam? Because if they are, I kind of have a chance. Or no, if they're not running Hyper Beam, I kind of have a chance since this is a pretty bulky Rotom. Alright, I always go for the Protect here. <laughs> I can't risk them going for Fake Out. I'm just trying to gain as much information as I can. There is a chance I could win, but it's this is mostly information at this point. Let's see if they Nasty Plot or something. They show the Nasty Plot. Now here's what I'm thinking. It's in James's best interest here to protect his Rotom and go for damage with uh, his Incineroar, if not just like Parting Shot out, into the um, into the Porygon. So instead of targeting into the Rotom here, I'm actually just going to Thunderbolt into that Incineroar and knock it out. As we make the call right, we do make the correct read. Alright, so out comes the Porygon. I'm pretty sure the Porygon's max speed, so we are not going to be outspeeding this thing. I have to land a Hydro Pump pretty much, but we can figure out what move it's going to go for here. I mean, Rotom can't knock me out, but Rotom plus Porygon can. I want to see what he wants to go for, though. We're, we're getting information here. If he Nasty Plots twice, that is a god play. There's the Hyper Beam. Alright, so... I suppose priority number one is finding out this uh, this Porygon speed tier. It's probably max speed. It's probably max speed, so I'm going to go for the Hydro Pump into it. If I somehow outspeed, then we know it's not. There's the Hyper Beam. Let's see if I somehow live this. Or I guess it would have made more sense to target into the opposing Rotom, so that was probably a misplay by me. But it didn't matter in the end, because Analytic Hyper Beam does stupid amounts of damage. Alright, so we know it's running Hyper Beam, and we know that my Rotom's faster, I believe. I, I wasn't entirely paying attention there, but I'm pretty sure my Rotom's faster. Alright, so let's go into game two. Hopefully this time I don't just get, like, <laughs> I don't just lose my Ndidi right off the bat. Uh, yeah, let's receive that iconic James Speed League card, and we'll play with the same rules. Now, what I'm thinking is, I don't think they're going to lead off with Porygon again. I just don't see it. Hmm. Or maybe they do. I have to, I have to take a look at their team one more time and just think about the matchup. But I think, I think maybe this time I just make the same lead, but instead of going for... The Psychic move, I go for Max Strike, because it just makes the most sense. If there's a Corviknight in the back, that's an issue, because Corviknight can mess me up. So I'm thinking I lead it, like, the exact same way. And my controller just died. One second. One second. Alright. Alright. 
We have to play with Joy-Cons today. Oh no. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. What do I do? Hold on. Panic. Let's try that again. Uh, I'm going to make the same lead because I'm pretty sure Ndidi can take that hit at minus one while it's Dynamaxed. Alright, so. Yeah, let's go with that. All right, so I have to I have to select my lead one more time. Hopefully he didn't see my lead. I'm hoping that like it just disconnected and ended the battle for the same time it did us. So I'm gonna lead off the exact same way, bring the exact same mons because I just feel like this is my best chance of winning. Uh, because we actually were almost able to bring it back. Like we were we were doing pretty well. We made a really nice read, um, towards the end of game one, and we got some decent information. We know he's nasty plot wrote him. Uh, he got a lot of information off of us. That's that's something we need to note. Uh, but he didn't notice the scarf, which was nice. <laughs> we didn't reveal scarf, which is really good for us. Now the reason I'm leading off the way I am uh, is because I I'm I know that I can take a minus one uh, max strike from Porygon Z if I Dynamax my Ndidi. Actually, do I know that? Let me... Jeez, let me double check. Oh yeah, no. They have they have good special defense. I don't even need to calculate. I can take that hit. The point here is Ndidi is faster than Porygon, so I want to make sure that um, I just keep my speed, you know? And they're likely gonna want to go for a, um, they're likely gonna want to go for a follow me turn one and not, not like um, icy wind. So we should be fine. Terrakion and Cinera, I'm fine with that lead actually. Expanding force is nasty damage, absolutely bonkers damage. In fact. Um, but do I actually, do I feel comfortable with that lead? Do I? I have to think about this. Do I want to Dynamax my Ndidi is actually the question. If I'm entirely honest here. You know what I might do? I might self beat up and save Ndidi for the endgame. Let's do that. I'm going to self beat up, hope that they go for a dark type move into the Ndidi and target into my Thievul. I'd much rather have them get rid of Thievul than anything, because Thievul's a huge threat to their team. And if I and there's no way of them stopping myself beat up. They have no redirection, they have nothing. And they might just like immediately switch out their um they might just immediately switch out their Terrakion here, uh, fearing the expanding force, unless they're like focus sash. But I'm pretty sure their priority is like use a dark move on Indeedy, take out the Thievul. If they rock slide, I'd actually really like that. I just don't see them doubling into Terrakion with anything. Come on, baby. I just don't want to see a close combat. Yes! Okay, we're good. We're good. Give me that plus one. There's the defense fall. Give me that plus five, in fact. Ah, uh, that's that's not terrible, I guess. <laughs> not incredible, not terrible though. I was actually really hoping that they would just go for the um the darkest layer out or something. There's Clefairy. So uh, Clefairy's gonna come in here. And I have to actually switch in the Ndidi. So by switching in Ndidi, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a scenario where I can go for max strike and lower that thing's speed. So I'm pretty sure they're going to want to target into my Terrakion. So what I can do here is I can go for... Do I max strike and protect? I definitely think I Dynamax my... My, um... Terrakion. Or not my Terrakion. Because they're going to follow me, right? I mean, I could take the hit. Here's what I'll do. I'll Expanding Force. I think that's my play. And I can Dynamax and probably take whatever this Terrakion wants to go for.
Yeah, I'll Expanding Force and I'll Max Knuckle into Terrakion. They're likely going to, like, just take the hit by following me. But I'm pretty sure I can take a hit from Terrakion if it close combats or something. And it's a speed tie, too. So, I might be able to knock out this um, Clefairy before the Terrakion hits me. I'm more concerned with getting a Clefairy, to be honest. Because I know I'm, I'm going to have to deal with that. There's the Protect, actually. Okay, this might work out for me. If I win the speed tie. There's Expanding Force. Come on, baby. And we get the KO. Beautiful. And we're going to Max Knuckle that thing. So what's in the back that's faster than us? I think it's only Rotom. Or only, uh... The only possibility is, um... Porygon. And Porygon would be really annoying to deal with. However, I can increase my special defense by going for, um... By going for Max Rockfall into the Clefairy here and likely knock it out. There's the Porygon Z. Okay. So... I 100% think that my play is going to be to Expanding Force into Porygon Z. And go for a max rock fall as well. Yeah. Because they're going to Dynamax this Porygon. And they're probably going to follow me. But I think it's fine. Because I'll outspeed that Porygon um, with my Ndidi every turn. And if I can keep Rotom... Basically, the whole the whole thing I'm going for here is remove the Porygon. And keep Rotom alive to deal with Incineroar in the endgame. That's the game plan here. They're likely going to follow me. They're likely going to decrease my speed. But I think I'll be fine. They could even help in hand, which in a way would be best case scenario, but I don't think that's their play. I'm trying to take as many of these as I can. Here's the follow me, max rockfall. He actually takes that really, really well, but I'm going to go ahead and increase my special defense a bit. Now, Incineroar can come in, but I don't think it's too much of an issue. I think I might be able to win this. It depends on what moves they're running here. They might have a move that'll just mess me up, but Max Strike makes the most sense, yes. I take, like, nothing from that, so I'm really happy with this. Yeah, that Sandstorm is so helpful. And I can definitely beat this uh, Porygon Z with Ndidi in the endgame, but I have to get rid of that Incineroar, so my main priority right now is going to be knocking out that Incineroar with a max Rockfall. And switching in my... Um... Or actually, how many turns of Psychic Terrain are there? I might need to play this a little bit more carefully. Because this, um, this Porygon Z can mess me up in the endgame. I'm kind of hoping Psychic Terrain runs out either this turn or next. We have two turns of Psychic Terrain. So, hopefully, hopefully Rotom can take this hit. Yeah, Rotom's going to have to come in here. And I'm going to have to max Rockfall into this uh, Incineroar. And I'm max Rockfalling purely in case they decide to uh, go for some kind of, like, ice move to remove my special defense drop or something. I don't know. I, like, there's just no reason to max Knuckle. Max Rockfall does the most. Max Darkness. That's actually great. So now I, I think they might have anticipated me going for Protect or something. Or Max Guard. But I get my Berry off. And I'll be able to remove this thing. So I think I just win this game now. Yeah, I should definitely be able to win because uh, there's no way Ndidi has to come in. And Psychic Terrain ends next turn. So uh, I'll be able to get the Choice Scarf and Ndidi thing going. The thing is, this game we definitely revealed Scarf, which is a little bit of an issue. My play here is always to double protect. Uh, because he can't knock out either of my Pokemon that way. And then Ndidi can come in while they're small, and I win with Expanding Force, because Psychic Train ends at the end of this turn. Hey, and they forfeit. Cool. So we're going into a game three now. We're going into a game three. 
I did reveal beat up, which is important information. Uh, I think they're more incentivized to lead Clefairy Porygon now, just because they know how well that'll work out. But I think I'm fine with the lead I made first game, because I like, as long as I keep Ndidi healthy, you know? So I'll play with the same rules. Bring that Psy Spam lead. Alright, let's do it. I'm recording my audio, right? Okay, cool. I am recording my audio. I was concerned that I might have forgotten. Alright. As there are people laughing in the other room. Hopefully they're not laughing at me. My son plays Pokemon. No. <laughs> That's definitely not it. Unless. <laughs> so we're going to do the same lead. I feel very comfortable with that lead. It just feels right. Uh, Terrakion is a huge issue for him. Like, it, it's a huge issue for him. So if I can keep that thing healthy, I should be good. And I'm really glad I didn't even have to, like, worry about speed ties the first game, or the second game, uh, with our Terrakions, because, like, now we know for a fact, Expanding Force in DD just straight up one-shots his Terrakion. There's no Assault Vest, there's no Focus Sash, we should be good. What if he's running, like, beat-up Incineroar? Does it get that? That'd be interesting. Alright, Porygon Z Clefairy. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to trade Max Strikes for a while. We still haven't seen Icy Wind or anything, which is concerning. Actually, what I could do here is I could Snarl and try to get into Rakion and just stall out his um, Porygon Z turns because we know how good Terrakion is in the endgame. Hmm. Here's what I'll do. I'll Snarl. I already clicked that, right? And I'll just go for the Expanding Force for damage on everything. Because uh, I can keep Terrakion for the endgame, and it just feels nice. It just feels nice. I can't self-beat up or anything, but by setting up the sand, there isn't much he can do versus me. And my Thievel's still going to outspeed both of these Pokemon at minus one, and Terrakion won't have minus one coming in. So I, I do genuinely think this is the best play I could be making right now. Hopefully no crits or anything. There's the helping hands. He doesn't even redirect. He's 100% trying to get rid of... Um, no. Okay, that's fine. As long as we hit this Porygon, I'm fine. I was concerned that we didn't hit the Porygon. I'm like, that's an issue. That's a huge issue. Expanding force for damage. Get a bit on both of these things. There's the max strike. He's going to lower my speed. On the Thievel. That's actually incredible for me. Because now I get two hits off on this Porygon. Here's what I'll do, in fact. Um, I don't even think I need to Snarl. I'll fake tears because I want to get rid of this Clefairy. Or Clefairy drops either way. I think I should just Snarl. He could Helping Hand. I'll fake tears. I haven't revealed that yet. Because it, it gives me a chance to knock out this uh, Porygon Z. There's the Helping Hand. We did it. We're still faster with Ndidi. As long as he's not timid. And I think they're modest. Please be modest. Ah, they're... They're indeed timid. And they go for the Indeedee. I should have snarled there. That's my bad, though. But I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. Because my Thievel's timid, uh, so I'm going to speed tie with him, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to speed tie with this... Uh, do I want a speed tie, though? That's concerning. Hmm. Uh, we'll get into Rakion. We'll get into Rakion. And he's definitely going to follow me. 
I can I can tell for a fact he's gonna follow me. So I'll I'll snarl here. Um, and I think it's my best play to max guard because he should be targeting Terrakion if anything. Now I'll just max Rockfall into the Clefairy. It gets my special defense up. I'm already outspeeding that Porygon, and the Porygon doesn't do much damage to me. Once I have that special defense up, I'm not in a bad position. So yeah, I could have been in a much better position had I Snarled and just Expanding Force. Or maybe just sack the Rotom. There's the Follow Me, that's fine. Let's see if I win the Speed Tie. I... Oh, okay, that's with Terrakion. I was hoping uh, to get the Snarl off. <laughs> I, I was checking for Snarl right there. Alright, so I definitely need to uh, win the Speed Tie now. I think. There's the Max Strike, we do not win it. So I'm now faster than this, uh, or I'm now slower than this Porygon, which is slightly concerning. The Porygon is at, um, it is at minus one at the very least, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they brought their own Terrakion in the back. Probably like Terrakion and Cinnabar. It would make a lot of sense for them to close combat here. I think I'm more concerned about them knocking out my Rotom than anything, so I'll go for a Protect on my Rotom, as they probably go for Hyper Beam, and I'll Max Knuckle on that Porygon Z. I could probably Max Rockfall, in case they bring in the Incineroar, but I, I probably should have um, Max Rockfalled, actually, now that I think about it. There's the Protect, that's fine. Because now my Max Rockfall is definitely going to take out this... Um, Definitely going to take out this Corviknight. Or I guess uh, Max Knuckle probably into Thunderbolt should do it. I actually don't have that much special special attack investment, though. So maybe my play is going to be to Max Knuckle into that opposing Terrakion and go for a Thunderbolt into the Corviknight. I'm hoping this Thunderbolt does enough. So I'll Max Knuckle Terrakion here. And plus one should definitely KO. Like, I don't care what Terrakion's running. I'm going to KO this thing. I'm more concerned about Corviknight, though. I definitely don't think they can knock out my uh, Rotom in one shot. Or even by doubling into it, since we have that Citrus. So this is coming down to the wire. This is definitely coming down to the wire. There's the Protect. As they fail to Protect, that's incredible for me. I get my Thunderbolt off. All I need is for this to KO. Oh, that's, uh, that's not quite enough. But uh, I think I'm still in a good position. I think I'm still in a good position. Because I have all my health on my Rotom. There's the Iron Head. You know what? They are setting up to... They're, they're setting up to knock out my Terrakion as I protect my Rotom. Which is very concerning. And I'm really scared of that, actually. So what I'll do here... Um, what I'll do here is I'll actually protect my Terrakion. Do I protect my Terrakion? I think I could Rock Slide and possibly win. I can possibly win by rock sliding. That's the thing. Alright, here's what I'll do. I have to Thunderbolt into Corviknight, and I have to rock slide, I think. Because if they... They have to double into Terrakion to KO it. So by doing this, I KO the Corviknight. And I think Thunderbolt plus whatever will knock it out. So I need to land this rock slide. I think my, my worst play I could do is Protect, and they end up whiffing it, but I don't think it matters in the end, because if they landed that if they landed that hit, 
I think I would have won by virtue of um, Porygon not being able to attack that next turn. As long as I landed my Rock Slide. Yeah, so I, I think I would have won anyways. It, it, it's kind of hard to tell, actually. It's kind of hard to tell. All right, but let's go ahead and get into the um, let's go ahead and get into the post game interview. I'm actually really happy I managed to pick up that win. That was a really close set, and I didn't expect to win. Uh, but I'm glad that I could showcase Indeedy Thievel to all of the uh, James Beck's or James Bake fans. So uh, thank you so much for having me on your channel, James. Um, if you guys want to see a post game interview, it'll be on James's channel. So yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and. Hop over to James's channel. Thank you for watching my side of the battle, though. I really appreciate you. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.